And unfortunately, what we're currently seeing by the current administration has been economic policies that have been detrimental to the employment numbers that we currently witness. South Africa's jobs crisis is worsening. Joining me to discuss is my colleague at the Center for Risk Analysis, Becky Mahlobo. But before we get into this conversation, a quick reminder, if you're new here, we release a video every weekday morning at 7 a.m. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified about our latest updates. So Becky, what can you tell us about the jobs numbers that were released this week? Yeah, David, coming from the latest employment numbers from StatsSA, reveal that South Africa is a trend outlier when we compare it to what we see in other countries. Instead of seeing an improvement in employment numbers, what we're actually witnessing, unfortunately, is that of stagnation. Currently, there's about 14.9 million people employed in the country, which translates to about 793,000 increase in the number of people employed when you compare the second quarter of this year compared to the second quarter of last year. That is massively dwarfed by what we see by the number of people unemployed, which now sits at 11.9 million people, an increase of 1.6 million. That's under the expanded definition. That translates to South Africa's very low employment levels at about 37.7%, which is far below what we see in other emerging markets at 60%, and far below that of developed markets at 70%. Okay, so that expanded definition, that includes people who are no longer actively looking for work. Exactly. And the reason why I emphasize the expanded definition, as you've noted, is that it includes discouraged work seekers, a dangerous trend that we're witnessing in the country, that a large proportion of South Africans are giving up the aspirations of employment in the country, largely due to employment opportunities in the country being on the great decline. All right, so opportunities are shrinking, but why is that, uh, Becky? What, are, what is driving this very high levels of unemployment? David, it has been, it's because of the decade long of hostile policy that has been detrimental to the South African economy and in result has been detrimental to job creation opportunities leading to a decline in living standards in the country. And unfortunately, it has led us to this point where we've seen historically high unemployment levels in the country. What is often missed in terms of economic analysis is actually looking at policy and the, and the relation between policy and economic output in the country. And unfortunately, what we're currently seeing by the current administration has been economic policies that have been detrimental to the employment numbers that we currently witness. And those policies include the Labor Relations Act, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, and also the National Minimum Wage Act. And the introduction of the National Minimum Wage uh, at the beginning of 2019, I think, uh, at the time, policymakers were arguing that this would have no impact on unemployment. And it's hard to isolate that variable. But the minimum wage, if you look at it compared to many other countries, uh, is set very high. It's almost at the same level as the median wage, whereas in many other countries like the UK, for example, it's at about 10% of the median, median wage. Do you think that the minimum wage is, is, is contributing to our escalating unemployment problem? Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. Yes, uh, most definitely. South Africa has one of the highest minimum wages when we compare to other countries around the world. And in effect, makes new employment very expensive for businesses. And in other words, it restricts new employment, meaning that, in, meaning that businesses cannot, are not able to hire new employees as it's more expensive for them to take on that new employment. So it acts as a barrier on employment opportunities for many South Africans, particularly the youth, with a youth unemployment rate of about 75%. That is very dangerous. And it's frankly very reckless of the current administration to impose minimum wages with such high youth unemployment levels in the country. Yeah, and many of these protections for workers are what you would see in developed markets. But South Africa is a long way off from a developed market. And the skills profile of our workforce is very different. And I think what we should be doing is trying to craft policy for the labor market that we have rather than the labor market that we wish we had. Exactly, exactly. The only way out of this, David, is to implement uh, in policies that will result in growth. And the only way to implement those policies is a fundamental shift in the way of thinking from within the ANC, which has shifted its way of thinking 10 years ago. And unfortunately, in lack of this, South Africa will continue on its track record of stagnation and flatlining of GDP output in the country. Yeah, Becky, that is unfortunately true. And in terms of 
liberalization of the labor market regulatory framework, what would you suggest that the government do in order to, to free up uh, the labor market and stimulate job creation? What needs to occur, David, is the complete scrapping of minimum wages and implement a policy of private voluntary contracts between the employer and the employee. In that way, it will, it will open up the market for new employment and for more South Africans to be absorbed in the labor market. And the skills profile of our workforce? Do you think that we have the skills to compete in a global economy? Also, another important point that you touched upon there, David, is actually improving our educational standard, which is absolutely poor. Uh, when we look at the number of South Africans that get matric, which is about 5% of the original cohort of grade one in 2008, pass mathematics with a pass mark of 50%. And that pass mark is very important when we look at the entrance for university entrance, which is about 50% pass mark for mathematics which only about 5% of South Africans get to. And once you get a university degree, you have about 70% chance of being employed in the labor market. Those labor absorption levels are comparable to what we see in developed markets. So what we also need to witness is a complete reform in the educational standard of South Africa in order to educate our kids and equip them with the skills needed to be absorbed in the labor market. I absolutely agree that we need to improve our skills profile, Becky, but often that is a long-term project it takes very long time to fix some of the problems in education. But in the yes. short term, we need to have policies that encourage low value adding jobs, many, many jobs in manufacturing, mining, and agriculture yes. as well to absorb particularly those people who don't necessarily have the skills to participate in the tertiary sector. Yes, you are absolutely correct. The educational expert is very long term. In the short term, what could be done, as we have uh, just recently discussed, is that scrapping of minimum wages. And the thing about such a, a fallacy with minimum wages is that it is assumed that people earning a minimum wage will stick to that level for a very long period of time. Whereas that's actually not the case. People as soon as they get employment, they upskill themselves through the training they receive on the job in order to earn higher income levels as they get more experience. And that's exactly what we're speaking about here, uh, David, that minimum wages prevent South Africans from actually upskilling themselves in terms of skills in the labor market. Yeah, absolutely, Becky, particularly for those young people entering the job market for the first time, if they haven't gotten the kinds of training that they need from the education system, they can get that through that first job, and then they can build their CV and go out and compete more actively in the labor market. Then we've touched on one aspect of reform policies that, or rather two, being that of the education as well as that of skills within the labor market. But there's also various of other policies that need to be implemented, such as that of encouraging investment in the country, which would mean the scrapping of uh, policies that hinder investment, such as expropriation of property without compensation. As we can clearly see what the evidence uh, looking at investment levels in the country has resulted in, which is a decline in investment levels in the country, looking at gross fixed cap formation from 2007 to where we find ourselves today, a decline from 26% of to, as a proportion of GDP to its current levels of 15%. So we need to scrap expropriation of our conversation, scrap the national health insurance, which is a still a policy being pursued by the current administration. And once those policies have been scrapped, we need to then look at what other policies hinder growth in the country, such as that reforming the, the energy perspective of the country. Thank you, Ms. Lobo. Thank you very much for sharing your analysis with us. Let's hand over to you, our viewers. What do you think is driving the jobs crisis in South Africa? Do leave your comment down below and share your thoughts and perspectives. We do read every one of those comments, although we're not always able to reply. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care. <laughs>